Sky Color is a really awesome children's story by author and illustrator Peter H. Reynolds. If you've joined us for our optional Google Meet, you'll know that this story is about a girl who creates a mural, but she doesn't have the color blue to make the sky in her landscape. Instead, she uses creative problem solving and has a growth mindset and thinks about all of the other colors that a sky can be. I wonder what colors you think a sky can be. We will be creating our very own sky color inspired landscapes. A landscape is a work of art that is of a place. We often think of it with this paper orientation where the paper is wider than it is tall. A landscape can be any place. It can be a place that's a city. It can be, be an ocean. It can be space. It can be a field. It can be mountains. We will be using color as one of our biggest elements of art in this work of art. Color is the property of something being green, blue, pink, purple, orange, or aquamarine. For our example, I'm going to be modeling a place in nature. So to get started, I will be working with pencil. I will be working with crayon, and I'm going to be using watercolors. The reason why I'm working with watercolors and crayons is because the crayon, the wax and oils of it, resists the water and allows for a really fun and interesting work of art that's got some visual texture to it. So let's get started. So on a fresh sheet of paper, we are gonna begin our drawing and then our watercolor. I do want to take some time and recognize that some of you might not have those materials at home and that's okay. You can still create an awesome work of art using other materials that you might have available to you, such as markers or maybe colored pencils, or maybe if you don't have paper and coloring tools at home, you could certainly create this project digitally on an app such as Sketches School, which should be on your iPads already. If you need help figuring out how to get that app or what it looks like, please check out the helpful tech tips on my website. Let's get started though with our drawing. So like I said, a landscape is a place and I'm going to create a place in nature. I'm going to start with my ground line or my horizon line. The horizon line is that spot where the sky meets the ground in a landscape. I think I'm going to have some visual interest by using a couple lines to represent that. So it looks maybe like it's a hilly valley that has just a little bit more space, more depth, more visual interest to it. I could decide to include the actual sun setting down here at the bottom if I wanted to. And maybe I have some sun rays radiating out from that sun. Now, if you're in fifth grade, you might think to yourself, huh, that kind of reminds me of our project where we learned about one point perspective with Peter Max. Feel free to pull on any of those tips and tricks, fifth graders, if you would like. I could add in some clouds that kind of cross my sun rays. Maybe I have some birds. As one of my awesome artists said, I'm putting in some easy birds because they are easy to draw and easy to color. And I could add in some other details on the ground. My one rule for these sky color inspired landscapes is that you can't use the color blue in your sky. I know, mind-blowing, crazy. The blue is usually the color that we use for the sky, but if you think about it, the sky can be lots of other colors. For instance, it can be gray on a cloudy, rainy day. It can be purple, pink, red, orange, and yellow in a time of sunrise or sunset. Sometimes the sky is purple and green when we're experiencing something called the northern lights. There are all sorts of colors for the sky, I would like you to pick one that is not blue when you do your project. I'm going to be working with some crayons to do something called wax resist. So I'm going to trace over some of my details with some crayons so that the edges of those details stand out. This also can help me kind of keep my paint in place. So if I don't want my paint colors to do something called bleeding together, that's when those colors mix together when they're wet next to each other. I can kind of control and wrangle my paint by adding in some details where I have traced over with crayon. 
Once I have done all of those details that I want to be wax resist with crayon, that's when I'm gonna grab my paintbrush and a water cup and start working with my watercolors. Now, the brushes that I'm using are kind of cool. They have the water right in the handle of the brush, so I'm not gonna be using a water cup, but that is what you would need if you're working with regular watercolors. So I'm gonna get started and I'm gonna work with my sky first and then I'm gonna do my ground. This helps make it look like the sky is behind the ground as I naturally overlap with my colors. I'm also gonna start with my lightest color first, that's yellow. This helps keep my paint clean as I'm working. So as I'm working here, I'm starting with some yellow to be a part of my sky. I'm doing my sun here. And if I want my colors to be more opaque and saturated, so it means I can't see through them and really bright and colorful, I'm gonna use a ratio of more paint to water. If I want my colors to be a little bit lighter and less saturated and less opaque, I would use more water to paint. That's a fun way to be able to control our color as well as, in some respects, our value when we are working with watercolors. And the way that it does value is if we're working on, for instance, a white paper, when white mixes with yellow, it creates a lighter yellow. So if we're working with a lower opacity and that white is peeking through, mixing with the yellow, it's gonna look like a lighter yellow than if we worked with a fuller opacity. All right, as I move into this next part of my sky, I'm gonna use a technique called gradient and work wet on wet. So I'm gonna work with some pink. And then before my paint dries, I would rinse out my brush, go grab some purple, and then where that paint is wet, it's gonna bleed together and form a nice, smooth, beautiful gradient. A gradient is when you make a shift gradually between either one value and another value or one color and another color. In this instance, I'm going to make a gradient in between the color pink and the color purple. Again, you can see I worked with a lot of paint in my brush in that area. I can move that around with my water. Alrighty, so now I've got my sky color. If I wanted to, I could work lightly, maybe with some wisps of purple paint in these clouds sometimes clouds look kind of purpley when they are in that evening sky. Then I'm gonna make sure that my brush is nice and clean before I switch colors. I'm gonna to switch to some green and I can pull on another art technique to create a sense of space. The other art technique that I can pull on is something called atmospheric perspective. So in atmospheric perspective, colors and areas that are further away from us tend to be a little bit more muted and a little bit, so by muted I mean a little bit more towards gray or just neutral. They're not as vibrant, they're not as contrasting. So I might leave that really light, but in this area that's closer to me, I might make it a little bit brighter and maybe have a little bit more variety, so different colors as I'm working to really make it really interesting to look at and interesting to see and help make it feel like this is closer to me in my sense of space that I am creating. So I might even work with another value of green. So here's kind of a darker blue green that I could include in some places to really make that foreground area really interesting and more dynamic to look at. To be complete, your artwork should be full of color. Your artwork should be a landscape. That means a picture of a place. Your artwork should have a sky that is not blue. You may include as many other details as you would like. If you want to try to recreate some of the characters from sky color, that would be super cool. Remember, you may use any art making material you have available to you. Once you have completed your artwork, please post it to this Seesaw activity. If you have questions, remember you can always ask. I look forward to seeing what you create.